Hey folks, today is May the 31st and I'm here with Trey from Innovative Sportsman. He's going to help me out with a project, uh, as are some folks down in uh, at Yak Attack later this week. And what we're doing is we're rigging out this John boat. This is a, a Tracker uh, Topper 1436. Um, going to set this one up. Obviously I have the Torquedo Travel 1103. It's a three horsepower equivalent. Uh, electric outboard and uh, we're gonna do a couple different things to this boat one of the things that Trey's gonna be doing is finding a way to instead of using the tiller throttle which is you know very convenient way to do it but I want to sit up here to get the weight forward so one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna get a stick steer on this somehow um, that's one project the other is the flooring uh, I don't want to have to stand on this stuff. I'm not decking it out totally flat, um, but I also do want a, a, you know, a flat floor in there. And I have some marine mat type stuff coming. Uh, you think you'd be able to put a, put you know, some sort of aluminum floor in there? Yeah, I think aluminum is the best way to go for weight. Uh, it doesn't absorb water, and it'll look really clean when we're done. So nice. That and uh, I do want, I do have the um, an anchor wizard that I'm going to have right about here and we'll use yak attack parts to run that line up to the front. If you can put like you have on my, uh, we did on the, uh, the outback, you gave me a nice anchor boom up there. Um, if you're able to, to get that on there, that would be a nice clean look for it. Yeah, we'll do something with a smooth operation so when it comes up that it doesn't bang on the front of the boat. Um, obviously with this boat we won't have to go as high because the boat sits higher but still keep that so it's quiet when you pull it up. Nice. All right, well, this is, uh, this is the start of a boat build. I think it's going to go pretty quick and I think we'll have a very nice, uh, you know, nice setup for the electric only reservoirs here in, uh, you know, probably two, three weeks time we'll be done with it. So while Trey works on the boat, uh, I got a couple things that I've, I've gathered, a couple supplies and, and parts, accessories, uh, so that I have them on hand so that when I'm at Yak Attack in a couple days and we're, we're putting a lot of accessories on, I have those parts ready. Uh, the, the first one that I'll mention is, is the anchor wizard. I know Trey was sort of prepping things with the anchor boom. Um, for the mushroom anchor off the front and uh, I've, I've taken this off of another boat I have and uh, I'll be using the, the original anchor wizard. Uh, it's a nice tough one. The, uh, the Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount here. I have on the throttle but I've actually swapped out the, the cord. I had a, a much shorter one for the ultralight and I've swapped that out for, I have a 16 foot cord, uh, which is appropriate. The next item I'll mention, uh, I've pulled the transducer off of a kayak that I had, and I tell you, this is the first time I've ever actually used this part. I'm always putting them on kayaks, and I never need uh, this part, but I've got it assembled, ready to go, uh, and it'll also be one of the first times I actually use the full length of uh, or at least most of the length of the transducer cord. Uh, I've got my, um, the plug ready for the, uh, the back of the Hummingbird Helix 10. And I've got my, my Yak Power connector here ready to go. Um, where I'm, how I'm powering it, I'll actually have this, uh, this Dakota Lithium uh, 12 volt, 23 amp hour battery. I've been using this for my Hummingbird um, Helix 10 uh, for some time. I've decided, because uh, I'm, I'm doing more and more salt water, although it's held up pretty good and I've, I've kept it in a, a, a dry bag, um, I've decided I need to step that up a little bit just, just to make sure. And I, I got one of these, uh, these cases and I'm going to pull some of this foam out and make, make a nice home for that 23 amp hour battery to nestle in there and be waterproof. I'm going to be doing that with the the Yak Attack through hole wiring kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that this afternoon and I'll be ready for uh, the rest of the, the install Tuesday morning at Yak Attack. 
All right, it's at least our first rigging day at Innovative Sportsman, and uh, Trey's up at the front measuring up things for the uh, the anchor boom. I'm here at the back, and I have the transducer partway on there. Uh, one thing I hadn't thought of with, with this side imaging transducer is that this is the profile is somewhat in the way. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, but uh, might be something we have to tackle later. Um, I've taken the battery off and I've actually run the, um, the data cable, the 16 footer back here through the bottom. You know, Trey's going to do the, the flooring, so I'm kind of burying all that. Tomorrow at Yak Attack, we'll find a place to mount this, uh, the, the throttle mount there. Also have the anchor wizard and that's going to run forward to the anchor boom that you're working on and what are your thoughts uh well with this we don't have to go quite as high as we would with a kayak because we're not worried about it hitting the water um but the idea is to definitely have it out far enough so it's not banging the handle um and up high enough so you can see it when it is all the way up um we'll start cutting metal and putting pieces together and see if we can't get this thing to to look good we'll try to get the concept down first and then and then figure out how we're going to make it look clean and, and work smooth and, and not chew up a, an anchor line. Part of making it look clean, um, Trey, you pointed me in the direction of this stuff um, and said that for, and we're going to keep it this color, I'm not going to do a whole lot with the, the finish, but you said the self etching primer is a pretty good match to these, yeah, these used, olive John boats. Yeah, I've used it a, a fair amount in the past. I've, uh, build a few John boats and this stuff matches really well and it dries fast and it it etches into the aluminum because aluminum doesn't hold paint very well so it, it lasts nice so. I appreciate that tip it'll make it look good the other thing I worked on yesterday is uh, and I don't have the Dakota, Dakota lithium battery here with me but I've made a nice little spot for it right here um, when I get it charged up and I've used that that yak attack um, through hole wiring kit right in there and that that came out pretty clean um, I did have to do a little custom work on the uh, once I realized that I needed that space for for the um, for it to clamp down so you look at that side and you look at this one I had to grind that down just so it would it would snap and it does um, I put a spot right next to it for the charger so that when I'm traveling Charger always stays with the battery. Whole thing is waterproof in that case. All right, I'm uh, I'm just finishing up the uh, the transducer here with the a couple P clips here. So we've kind of got our basic shape here of how we want this. We do a long contoured curve here because it's less friction on the rope. And I've experienced with with my anchor boom on my kayak that I put too sharp of a curve and it actually causes the line to squeal a little bit really annoying plus I think it scares the fish but so we've got the basic shape um, and it'll hold the anchor at center in the front and when you crank it up here it'll actually torque it a little bit so that it won't swing and hit the boat or anything so now we need to make the sides and the base plate uh, heavy enough to withstand a 14 pound anchor so. All right, so what we've got here, um, this is the the anchor boom, and it, like I said, we did a nice contoured bend so it, the cord runs smoothly over it, um, the rope that the anchor's on. Uh, but this right here is a, a rod that we put through, and it's got a slight bend in it, you can see. It'll keep the, the rope centered on the anchor, and I'm just marking them to where they need cut, and then it'll get welded into place. Uh, and then once this is welded into place, we can make the base, drill the holes, and get it uh, bolted to the boat. Just sanding it down, get all the rough edges off of it, make sure there's nothing sharp that's going to cut the rope. And we're getting ready to throw it in the sandblaster to 
get a good rough surface on it so the paint sticks really well. So by putting it in the sandblaster, it takes all the sharp edges off and leaves a, a slightly rougher finish than the bare metal and it gives us something for the paint to stick to. So we'll take it outside and hang it up and paint it now. I think that'll work the best. So we're making an eye for the, the rope to go through to go to the anchor boom. And we're making it out of half inch round so it's a nice smooth, uh, a nice smooth contour for this rope to go around and it doesn't cut the rope in any way. So we're gonna cut this off and then we're gonna weld it in down here. I'm here at Legoland, also known as Yak Attack, and uh, we got we got some uh, components we're going to put on. John Hipsher is here. He's going to help me with this this part of the build and uh, talk to us about what, what all we got. We got a lot of parts. Well, I think we got good blank canvas. You know, there's a lot of people with you know rent you know simple simple standard John boats. You know, and there's a lot of possibility when it comes to track and rigging accessories and potential. And, you know, kind of from the standpoint of where this boat's going to be for Jeff is electric only. And there's a lot of lakes in the U.S. and a lot of local lakes, a lot of good fisheries. They don't get a lot of pressure because they are electric only. Um, but this one's going to be based around adding, you know, we're going to add plenty of gear track on here because there is such good service to do it. So we're going to add plenty of gear track to where we can have, you know, things for you know easy rod storage, um, fish finder, you know, make sure we have a good place to put the net. Um, but then also simple stuff of how to store rods and also maybe some unique techniques on how to use a stakeout pole um, when you don't have, um, you know, a power pool or, you know, another device for that. So this is just getting started and um, we'll see how it goes today and see how it progresses and see what the end result is. Perfect. And, uh, you know, when we're, we're done here, I know I'm getting it on the water tomorrow with uh, Trey from Innovative Sportsman and, uh, Brian the carpenter, and uh, we're gonna see his rig as well. Uh, and then I think next week Trey's working on the flooring. I know I got parts coming in, you know, in between now and then, but this is an important part to really make it fishable tomorrow. All right, let me talk to uh, specific parts that we're putting in. Uh, we mentioned the gear track that's going in everywhere. Um, my leverage landing net uh, is gonna be up here. Um, this is gonna cradle it nice and, you know, securely up front. I will have, obviously, my camera mount um, everywhere. Be able to, with the lock and load base, move it all over the boat because I'll have lots of these extra lock and load bases uh, to get the camera mounts. Um, I got a cleat up front uh, as we move back. This is sort of an interesting one that I've not worked with before. It's the lock and load heavy duty mount. This is what's going to allow me to put 
the depth finder on the side. I was going to put the depth finder up here, but it's out of reach, so I wanted it closer. And John said, this, this would be good on the side here. I'm going to put one on either side, but I think the uh, Hummingbird Helix 10 with that lock and load, the, the heavy duty one on the side, on the side wall here is going to get it at the right distance for what I need to do. Um, moving back, I will have some uh, Omega and Omega Pro rod holders. I'm probably going to stagger them like this and have them have my rods angled back to the bullwinkle with the, the tips on there just resting very nicely. Um, Obviously, we have the Torquedo throttle mount here. I have a Zuka tube here that I'm going to have on the side. I'm actually going to use that. I'm going to use this parking pole. Let me see if I can reach across and grab that. Um, the parking pole in the Zuka tube is going to be how, in shallow water, I can anchor this boat and really keep it from swinging in conjunction with the, the anchor wizard. I can anchor off the front and then this if it's real windy, keeps it from swinging side to side. So, um, go ahead and put this down. I also have holders for the, um, for my sup paddle. I've found with other, you know, other boats, not just stand-up paddle boards, but having a stand-up paddle board paddle is really nice when you want to pull the, the motor up and just navigate real shallow water with the, this lightweight boat is a great thing. Um, obviously cup holders, not just for holding beverages, I always have them full of fishing lures and, and you know, scent and whatever else I put in there. Uh, moving towards the back, we have smaller sections of gear track and then I absolutely need this right here, my 360 degree white light. So the Busy Carbon Pro is, uh, is going to be nice and high on a four inch section of uh, GT175 right there. So I'm visible, I'm seen uh, when I launch early or stay out late. All right, so normally when I put this four inch section of uh, GT175 on a kayak, I just use, you know, the, the hardware that comes with it and, and, you know, just screw right into it. But this time we're using the backing plate the reason we're using the GT175 backing plate, and we'll, we'll find a spot that it fits up in there, is because I'm going to put a cleat on there. And the, the amount of torque and, and, and extra pressure that could be on you know, a windy day where I have this boat tied up is a little bit more than I have in a, in a plastic kayak. So I'll go ahead and uh, get my placing rate. I can feel pretty good center there. Let's drop off that backing plate and... Alright, I got it started. I'm going to get my backing plate in there, line it up, and just make sure that I get the first one on there secure before I go to the rest. So this one we're not doing the uh, backing plate on and I don't think it's going to be an issue because we have so much hardware there. It's a little bit thinner material than we had on the on the corners. So I think we'll be all right. All right, we got all our track in now. We're going to go ahead and put Put each of the accessories in, uh, starting with a Busy Carbon Pro, my 360 degree white light. And let's see, back here, I got cup holders going in in all sorts of places. Cup holders are great for holding fishing lures and drinks, bottles of scent. All sorts of stuff that you use a cup holder for. Um, I'm going to get one of the rotor grips in here for my standard paddleboard paddle. And 
it's a light enough weight boat that getting the, the sub paddle in there is going to be real nice. So I've taken the, this is called the Bullwinkle, and I'll rest the rod tips there and there. Um, this originally had these little hooks for the uh, hog trough that have kind of moved on from hog trough, and I, I do have a catch board, but I clip these because they have little hooks uh, that, that if you laid your rod there, it would kind of catch, so I just took a razor and chopped it. So but this is where the rod tips are going to be resting towards the back of the boat, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And, and I can pull these out if I have somebody sitting at the back of the boat. But that'll be good for, for rods. Um, I'm just going to replicate the same thing here. I'll probably have a couple extra um, lock and load bases just so I can put the... I can move the camera mount around to all sorts of places. Um, I could even back this off get one in here. There's enough room in there. That'd be a nice, you know, nice camera mount all the way back there. I'd swing it out over the water here, get, get this angle. We'll see. All right, moving up. Um, let's see. We have the Zuka tube that we're going to put in this track here and the reason for it is you know I'll put the parking pole in there and that will that's something that'll help keep me from swinging on the anchor line so I'll drop that down there that'll be ready for this uh, need to grab another lock, lock and load base for the Torquedo throttle map. Now, tomorrow when I'm out, I'm, I'm still going to need to use the, the tiller throttle, but I think week after next, or maybe end of next week, Trey will be working with this boat, and he will be putting putting some things together to make a remote steering, so I can steer and have the throttle up near this seat here. So for now, I'll just take the Torquedo throttle mount and just stick it there. I think that's probably where I'm going to need it. I am going to get a little pedestal base for the seat when it comes in so I can sit up here. And I like having the, the throttle right next to me. I got an Omega and Omega Pro. So got some rod holders there. I'll do the same thing on the other side, um, put another rotor grip in here somewhere for the, the parking pole. Let's put that on this side, we'll probably end up between two of the, uh, the rod holders. Actually, it'll be this side grabs a little bit better on that padded part. I'll get my cup holder rock in here and I'm going to jump ahead. We'll go up to the front of the boat. We've got the larger cleat we're going to stick at the bow. So we got a, a bow cleat and a stern cleat. So when I need to, to tie this off to a dock after launching and go park my truck, I may not need to though with those wheels. We'll see. I may be able to walk it on down with the wheels and take the wheels with me. Um, another roto grip here for the leverage landing net. Essentially that right there. Camera mount. Lots of lock and load bases everywhere. That's the greatest thing is I, you know, to be able to take, to change 
camera angles so you're not constantly a lot of people do YouTube um, videos it's just constantly the same head on or the same over the shoulder if you're able to switch it up and move from here where it's it's facing this this direction to You can you can mount it in there and swing it over the edge. A lot of different, you know, really quick um, adjustments to your camera angle with this and with the two longer ones as well. So a lot of different options. So we're getting somewhere. Uh, next thing that we got to really concern ourselves with is the heavy duty lock and load mount, which is going to go on right here can see I've already got that part of it in there it's just gonna bolt right in to the side of the hull there and my Humminbird Helix 10 will be supported by that attachment and then also the unit itself is, is gonna rest a little bit on the gunwale so making good progress it's looking good okay we got our heavy duty lock and load base going in here and I used just a little bit of the uh, silicone in there just on the back sides of these uh, these washers so when I draw them tight it's uh, gonna be watertight <laughs> 